I've got another real treat. Uh, Nathan Harvey also traveled for this, this conference. Nathan is from Annapolis. He runs all the uh, open source community development at uh, Chef Software. And so glad to have you. Thanks, Nathan. Thank Appreciate you. It. Stage is yours. All right. Good morning. I haven't even said anything yet. Thanks. That was awesome. Uh, how many of you, this is your first time at a DevOps Day event? Holy cow, that is awesome. And how many of you, this is your first time at a, at a technical conference? All right, well, you got to uh, give a round of applause to those two gentlemen at least. Like, that's amazing. Um, coming out to a conference, like, it takes some nerves. It's, it, uh, and maybe an employer to send you along. That helps, too, a little budget, right? Are you are you local also? All right, so you're local. You just kind of walked on over, and it was cool. That's great. Well, um, I hope that everyone is he that's here finds that today was worth the price of admission. Now, for those of you that this is your first technical conference, I'll let you know that a DevOps Days is a really inexpensive conference. So we set the bar pretty low. That's not true. Like, the bar is set very high. Uh, when it comes to going to conferences, it's an important thing to do as a professional. And I think that you will find that you get to meet a lot of great people and that you get to make these connections that are going to last for a long, long time. So everyone that's here for their first DevOps days, thank you, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. And I want you to find people that you haven't met while you're here over the next two days and start to make some of those connections. Uh, my name is Nathan Harvey. I'm the VP of Community Development at Chef. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, I would love to have you do that. Um, I used to be in operations. I'm no longer in operations. I'm now a community person. The way, like, the biggest difference for me is this, and this is how I describe it to folks. Uh, is anyone else here a community manager, by the way? OK, we've got a couple. Yeah, what's up? That's cool. Uh, so this is my biggest delta for moving from an operations job to a community management job. I put down the pager, and I picked up the bar tab. And either way, 3 AM, I'm up and going. Like, it's kind of <laughs> awesome. But because I put down the pager, like I don't get that, that rush. How many of you feel that rush when your pager goes off at 3 AM and interrupts you from something that's really important that you should be doing, and the pager goes off? Uh, some of you are like, are, yep, yep, I'll admit it. Many of you are like, no, I, that's not me. You're lying. I know you get a little bit of a rush, because it, it makes you feel important, right? So to, to kind of make up for that, what I do these days is when I give presentations, I leave my phone on. And then I tell people my Twitter at the beginning of the talk. So if you tweet at me or mention me on Twitter during the talk, my phone will go off. And we'll see how good I am at ignoring my phone. Now, uh, I was giving a presentation one time. And I was talking about risk management. So the only word on the slide was risk. And the phone rang. And I said, hi, I can even ignore the phone when it rings. And I walked over, and it was my wife. And uh, it turned out that was not great risk management on my part, but I did ignore the phone call. Uh, the only other quick thing I'll say about uh, following me on Twitter is you have to misspell my name. Uh, the rule in my house was mom picks the names and dad misspells them. So I'm N-A-T-H-E-N, unlike every other person you know with a name that sounds just like mine, but is spelled totally different. They're all wrong, so you know, like mine is the only one that's correct. Uh, so. I want to tell you a little bit about how I got into communities and community management and why I think that the community itself, if you look around, the people that are here are the reason that you're here, are the reason that we do great things with DevOps. So for me, I, I go all the way back to 2010. I went to RailsConf. I was managing Rails applications at the time. I went to a, a talk there that was, uh, this, this was the first, my first real introduction to DevOps. It was a talk by James Golick, and one of the things that he said during that talk was, you know that DevOps thing? A hashtag does not a movement make. And so I said, oh, you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to follow the hashtag DevOps on Twitter and figure out what the heck is he talking about? Because I don't know what DevOps is, but some of the words he said kind of feels like me, kind of feels like a thing that I want to get involved in. And that's how I first got involved with DevOps. At that same conference, I attended another talk um, by Dr. Nick that was about contributing to open source software. How many of you have ever contributed a pull request or anything else to open source software? 
How many of you uh, of those remember the first time you did it? Like the first time you contributed to open source? Of course, everyone, maybe not everyone, most people remember the first time they contributed to open source software. I was in a, a talk at a conference and I submitted my first pull request to an open source project. Two days later, the maintainer of that project accepted my pull request. It was ridiculous. It was the most ridiculous thing in the world. Like, I'm not a great coder, I'm an operations person. I don't really understand all this stuff, but I want to contribute, I want to give back to the community. So I went, I learned about some simple things that you can do to go and start contributing to open source. I contributed to that project. That contribution was accepted, and that was it. I was hooked. Like, I had that dust in me, I was infected. Uh, later on, about a year later, actually, I went to my first DevOps days in Mountain View. And I'll tell you about DevOps days in Mountain View for me. So uh, first, it happened right after the Velocity conference. How many of you have been to Velocity? How many of you think it feels just like a DevOps days? Yeah, not really so much. Maybe, maybe a little bit. So the thing about Velocity is it's a typical technical conference, right? You go in for two or three days, people are presenting at you the whole time. I went to DevOps days for the first time after this and they talked about open spaces. How many have never done open spaces before? Yeah. What I did when I walked into that DevOps days, I sat down and they described how open spaces were going to work. And I'll be honest, like I'd been at a conference for three days consuming information. I was exhausted. Conferencing is hard, it's hard work. Um, and they described this thing called open spaces where we're all just gonna make up the agenda ourselves and then we're just gonna go talk about those things. And if I'm being honest, uh, which I sometimes am, uh, that was the only thing in the world I didn't wanna do that day, was go to open spaces. I thought it sounded ridiculous. It sounded scary, like I'm gonna have to talk to people, I'm gonna have to help come up with topics, it was terrible. But I had the most amazing experience there. And I think that those of you that have never done open spaces are gonna find something similar here today. So check out the open spaces because they truly are the best way for you to get to know the people that are in this room and to share ideas, learn things, and so forth. So let's talk a little bit about communities. Communities in, in our world, the communities in tech, are highly distributed. They're leveraging a bunch of social tools. For me, Twitter is where it's at, right? Twitter is where I find and meet a lot of people. I know many folks on Twitter. We're gonna leverage events for ideation, like we come together at DevOps Days and talk about things, and they're open to everyone. Our community is open to everyone. Now, when you join a community, one thing that's important, or if you want to start your own community or help organize a community, a thing that's very important is that you do remain open to everyone. And in order to do that, you must have some sort of community guidelines. You must have a code of conduct, you must have some sort of community guidelines that talk about what's acceptable within your community and what's not. And what happens when people behave outside of those norms. And you have to do this in order to make sure that everyone feels welcome. We are explicit about what is good and accepted behavior within our community. There's a code of conduct for this DevOps days. Every DevOps days has a code of conduct. I hope that you've all read that and believe in that and follow that. As we look at other ways of building community, I wanna talk through three big areas. Share, coach, and learn. So how do I go into the community, whether that community is internal at my own company or whether that community is the broader open source or broader technology community. So first, one of the things that we talk about that can help you build a community within your organization or with a new technology, around a new technology, is how do you get started with that? I want you to think right now about what happens when someone new joins your team or joins your company. How long does it take for them to get their system set up and a code change deployed into production. Doesn't matter what that code change is. That code change could be a new line that is just a comment in a file. How long does that take in your organization? Is it hours? Is it days? Is it weeks? What's the unit of measure there? My guess is it's, how many think it's hours? We measure that in hours. Right, that's what I was thinking. How many think it's months? Oh boy. Wow, months. 
that's uh, like it's it's totally legit. But oh my gosh, months months for you to put code into production when you start. It can take a week or more just to get your laptop configured. I think about the simplest thing, right? All I want to do is add a comment line to a piece of code. All right, so what are the things that you have to think about? Do I have access to the right repositories? Because we're all using proper version control systems, right? So, no, no, that's not funny. That's just a statement of fact. We're all using proper version control systems, right? Uh, please. It should take you months <laughs> to get stuff into production then, please. Please use like don't don't worry about community. Start with GIT. That's how you start it. That's how you start building a community. It starts around Git. Start there. I'm sorry if your boss isn't here to hear that, um, but they should be. Um, so just think about all of the things, all the systems you need access to. How do I get involved in the development workflow and get that out there? So this is a, a concrete thing for you to take home. How do I get more people helping with the work that we need to do in our community at my organization? Another thing that we recommend, and we find that this works very successfully, is a thing that we call demo days. So the way that this works is we're working in sort of a DevOps process and a DevOps workflow. One of the things that we're doing is we're, we're truly changing how we build systems, how we build applications. We want to build things in a very iterative process. We're going to build a small change. We're going to ship that out. We're going to get feedback from that, make another small change. This is what we want to do. Well, you can't move from waterfall to shipping like that overnight. You can't just wake up one day and say, all right, we're done with waterfall. It's time to do agile. How many of you woke up one morning and said that? No, no, you did say that, right? That's not what you actually did, but I'm sure many of us have said that. Well, so when we talk about demo days, this is what we do. Uh, and we do this with a lot of our customers. We see this happening across our community. We, uh, first, we hold these meetings weekly. We invite everyone in the company to come to these meetings. Any developer, any engineer who's built something that's worth showing, and that is worth showing is a very low bar. We want to see a new feature. Share that. I don't know why my slides are auto-advancing. It must think it's an Ignite talk. Uh, or maybe they're just telling me, move along. You're going to run out of time, which is also probably true. We share that. We record it. We post it internally. The cool thing about this is when you start working in these new ways and sharing it with your entire community, with your entire company, other groups within your organization are going to want to work this way. So I'll tell you a quick story. I hope it's quick. Uh, it's about two demo days that we did last summer. The first demo day, we had the entire organization there, and an engineer showed up and said, hey, I've been working on this new feature for searching on the Chef server. Now, if you don't know anything about Chef or don't know anything about what the Chef server might hold or what you might search for, that doesn't really matter. Feature, new search capabilities in Chef. Whole company is there. The engineers are like, yeah, cool, we need better search capabilities. Sales and marketing are like, yeah. We need new features, because we can market and sell those and get more customers. That's going to be awesome. The developer was given control of the, the video uh, sharing system that we had, started sharing his screen, and pulled up a web page that looked like it was built in 1997. It was a white web page. It had a text box. And next to that text box, it had a button that said submit. And everyone in sales and marketing completely upset. Like, how are we going to sell or market this? This is ridiculous. And then it got worse. He started typing in some weird syntax into this box for a, a search criteria. And then he hit the submit button. And now everyone in marketing and sales was completely deflated. Because what came back was a pile of JSON. <laughs> like, oh, there's no way we can sell this. Everyone in engineering was like, yeah, that's awesome. We can't wait to get that shipped. And so no one in sales and marketing could understand. But the, the point was he built a feature, and it worked. And he could share that and start to get some feedback. Well, three weeks later, he came back for another demo day. And again, the whole company's there. Sales and marketing see that this engineer is going to demo the same thing. And the first thing they say is, well, thank goodness they only give each engineer five minutes. I can go back to checking my email for a minute. Because you know, they know what's going to happen. Everyone in engineering is like, Man, you showed us this three weeks ago. Why are you back here showing it to us again? We know what it's going to look like. Well, of course, he'd integrated it into the user interface. So now when he shared his screen, you see the beautiful Chef server. Sales and marketing were like, oh, wait, this is something completely different. He typed in a query, he hit a thing, search results came back. They were beautiful. Sales and marketing were pumped. Yeah, we can sell this. Everyone in engineering was bored. 
We saw this three weeks ago, man. It looked, it, it, there's no difference to it. It was a pile of JSON then, it's a pile of JSON now, it's just prettier. The key to this though is that when we're working in new ways, what we need to do is share these new ways that we're working with as many people as possible. And what happens when you do that is groups outside of your group will want to start working in these new ways. They see how you're moving faster. They see how you're building smaller things that are worthwhile and getting feedback faster. I want to do that. How can I, how can I apply those skills to marketing? How can I apply those skills to finance? How can I apply those skills to the applications that I'm building? At Chef, we share these internally. I have a problem, I like to do everything publicly. So now if you go to our YouTube channel, you can actually find a Demo Days playlist and you can watch some of our own internal demos and check those things out. Uh, <clears throat> the next thing I wanna talk about with building a community internally is breaking bread. Now, I feel, I, I feel, kind, of, uh, I feel kind of sad and a little bit angry at Ernest because this morning he said, oh, culture talks, culture talks, and all they're gonna do is tell you to go have a beer with a colleague. Uh, I'm here to tell you, go have beer with a colleague. Like, it's, it's, actually a, it's actually a valid thing for you to do. Go out and hang out with people outside of your organization. Eat lunch with them, uh, go grab a beer with them, whatever it happens to be. You need to form diverse bonds across your organization. You need to talk with people, sit with people, Many places where there's still this fighting between development and operations, the first piece of advice I will give you to solve that is make your developers and operators sit together, co-locate them. But it cannot start and end with dev and ops. We call it DevOps, I think it's a terrible word, and I come to my Ignite talk later and I'll tell you why. But it can't end and start with dev and ops. We have to go broader, we have to look outside of those two communities so that we can DevOps properly. When is the last time you had lunch with someone from legal? Anyone wanna answer that question? If it was with legal and HR at the same time, I'm sure you don't wanna answer that question. But also, if you're going to have lunch with legal and HR, it's better that you initiate that lunch than they initiate that lunch. These are, these are words of wisdom that I'm giving you here. Now, so go and form those diverse bonds. You want to know who those people are before you need them. You want them to know who you are before they need you. You want to understand how, like what keeps them up at night? What are the things that they're working on? And vice versa. The other reason that this is so important is because things fail. Things fail all the time. And when things fail, we need to have good postmortems. How many of you feel like you got postmortems nailed? You do postmortems or learning reviews better than anyone else? All right, that's cool. Uh, I don't think we have them nailed either. I think we're in a pretty good place though. I'll tell you a little bit about how we do them. So when we hold postmortems, the first thing we do is invite the entire company to our postmortems. How many of you do that? Yeah, the people that work with me raise their hand. All right, good. So see, sometimes I tell the truth. Apparently I wasn't lying then. We invite the whole company to postmortems. How many of you uh, hearing that you should invite the whole company to your postmortem makes you a little bit nervous? Be honest. Yeah, I see some hands, I see some head nods. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Uh, I'm also kind of crazy. Uh, I don't invite the whole company. I host postmortems on YouTube. Uh, Google Hangouts, stream them live to YouTube. How many of you are ready to invite the entire world to your postmortem? Uh, all right, yeah, a couple of my colleagues also, that's good. Also, maybe I forced it upon them. Uh, but yeah, uh, stream them live to YouTube or invite the whole company. Here's why, when you do a postmortem, you get together, the first thing that you're trying to do is figure out what happened. How did we get into this place where this failure happened? Now this failure doesn't necessarily need to be an outage. It could be a failure in your workflow. It could be a failure in the way that teams are communicating with one another. We have to stop and retrospect. We have to stop and think about the things that we've done and how can we improve them. Now, if it is an incident, what we do, like a failure of a system, what we do is we get together, we lay out the timeline. Laying out the timeline can be key because when we have others in the room, they may have noticed issues before we noticed issues. It's weird, right? I'm a community manager. The thing I don't have is code running in production. But the thing I do a lot is watch Twitter. And I know this never happens to you, but it does occasionally happen to us. 
Twitter will notify us of outages before our monitoring system will notify us of outages. Never happens to you, right? Only happens to us, I know, I know. But when that happens, like we need to know from the public, how did you find out about this? How were you impacted? When we go into an incident review or a, a post-mortem, the two things that we ask, the two questions that we ask, how could we have detected this issue sooner and how could we have resolved it sooner? Those are the only two questions that matter. The time to detect and the time to repair or the time to resolve. The questions that don't matter are who should we fire for this? Who's to blame? Who has the fattest fingers in the room and caused that issue? That's not what we're here to figure out. And by inviting more than just the IT folks that are working on this, we can get better perspective about the issue. We can also come up with better solutions for the problem. So how many of you are operations folks, like operators, not developers, operators? Yeah, so when I, back when I was managing real systems, uh, the way that we ran our postmortems was maybe not dissimilar to yours. If you were involved in the incident, like hands-on or on the call, you had to come to the postmortem. If you weren't involved in the incident, you weren't even invited to the postmortem. Like you have nothing to say, it doesn't matter, right? So w that's how we used to be. And then I said, you know what? No, I think what we need to do is bring our developers in. We call this thing DevOps. DevOps is weird. It starts with DEV, and it's mostly operations people that are talking about it. So I think we need to bring more developers into this process. We brought developers in through one incident Operate, like the developer sat in the back of the room just listening. We came up with a brilliant solution, the operators did. We came up with a brilliant solution that would prevent that issue from ever happening again. Here was the only problem. When any of us took a step back and looked at that solution, it was a Rube Goldberg machine. You all know what that is, right? Like the shoe kicks the thing, it spills the cup of water, that puts off some chain reaction. The developer finally at the end of the meeting spoke up and said, you know, I could prevent that with three lines of code. Would you like me to write three lines of code? Yes, let's do that. We could not have come up with that solution without that engineer in the room, right? But we also couldn't come up with the right timeline without the customer service folks in the room. We couldn't come up with other solutions without the right people in the room. All right, so what else can we do to help sort of build these communities? You cannot treat knowledge as capital that you hold close to your chest. The reason that makes me valuable, the thing that makes me valuable is the knowledge that I have. I need to be sharing that knowledge with everyone in my company and maybe even with the broader community. So this knowledge sharing is super important. You have things like Slack, you have things like SharePoint. Who has SharePoint? Uh, never, don't, don't, uh, I'm, I'm just I shouldn't have said that. I love SharePoint. Microsoft is a great partner. Um, we love working with them. Uh, GitHub, yeah, I did leave out Google Docs, uh, uh, but I do have some sales folks in the room, and so my favorite question when they, or my favorite answer when they ask me the question, where can I find that, I say it's in Drive. Like, right, Brittany, it's in Drive, <laughs> it's fine. Um, so uh, the cool thing about these knowledge sharing tools is you can really start to build better connections with the people that you have here. If you look at this, this screenshot over here with all the heads on it, at my company we're very distributed. On a weekly basis we'll hold happy hours through our video chat tool. So this, is, this happens to be Zoom, it doesn't matter which video chat tool you use. Pick a time and get everyone together for happy hour. It's BYOB, <laughs> everyone gets to drink what they want. Uh, most of us, or not most of us, a lot of us work from home so you, know, you can drink some really good stuff and share that with your colleagues. Um, when it comes to sharing knowledge, you have to look, though, outside of just your company. So one place that you can look, uh, or listen, actually, is podcasts. So how many of you have a commute to work that lasts more than 10 minutes? Yeah. I used to, I, I don't anymore. What it, mine, if, if I'm really, really, really slow, uh, I, I can take 10 minutes to get from my bedroom to my office, but it's, it's really hard for me to do so. <laughs> Uh, but I used to have a really long commute, uh, and that was when I was really loving podcasts. Today, I'm glad that I have a lawn, and we're moving into the spring and summertime when it needs to be mowed, and so now I get like an hour a weekend where I can just listen to podcasts, which is great. 
listen to podcasts, but don't don't only really listen to them. I mean, listening to podcasts I itself, if you think about listening to a podcast, it's a very personal experience. How many of you have sat around and like listened to a podcast with four or five other people? It seems, it's, it's hilarious. Like, what? that's a weird idea. Why would I even do that? It's just, it's wrong. I podcast alone. But what about uh, talking about the podcast that you listen to with some of your colleagues or talking about a podcast that you listen to at a, um, at a meetup or something like that? So go and share those things. OK, so this is sharing. And I want you to think about those sharing ideas not only within the bounds of your four walls within your company, but think about it in the broader community. And let's talk, move on to coaching. So how do we coach our communities? How do we coach our teams to get better at DevOps? How do we coach our teams to get better at communities? Well, one thing that you can do is you can pull together a small cross-functional team to work on a project. Now, this can be very difficult to do. Uh, in some organizations, if what you want to do is pull together a small cross-functional team, where do you start? Any guesses? I'll, I'll give you the answer. You start at the org chart. Well, if we want to pull together a small cross-functional team, whoa, we first need to go to HR and change the org chart and put that small cross-functional team together. Anyone work in a place like that? Yeah, of course. Like large enterprises, you, what you don't do is pull together small cross-functional teams. You change out the managers. You change the shape of the org chart. That's ridiculous. You need HR on board to let you pull together small cross-functional teams. Do a lot of cross-training. Uh, how many of you have heard of Target's Dojo? This is a pretty cool thing. I was actually out there uh, a week or two ago. And if, you, and if you ask me nicely, at some point today, I'll give you a, a Target Dojo sticker, because they gave me a bunch of them. Um, at Target, what they do is they're moving all of their teams from Waterfall to Agile and Lean and DevOps. And the way that they do this is through a dojo. They will grab a team and say, you're going to come into the dojo for four to six weeks. Before you come in, you have to have a team charter. You have to have a project that you're going to work on. You're going to come in and you're going to receive coaching across these four to six weeks. You're going to learn what it's like to build a project using the new tools, using the new workflow. You'll get to exercise those muscles. And then you take that learning and you go back to where you were. You take it back to your department and start to share that knowledge, work in this new way. They practice coaching katas. What's the target condition? What's the actual condition? What are the next steps we need to take to make this team work together better? They learn about things like organizing their work on Kanban boards. And it's, it's mind blowing when you sit down and start working this way, but you come out so strong. All right, I want to talk uh, about nurturing a little bit as well. I want to talk about meetups. How many of you have never been to a meetup? It's cool. And when I tell you, go to a meetup, I know what you hear from me is, hey, when you're done work, I want you to go to work. Will you do that for me? You're like, no, what I want to do is go to pub or I want to go to family. Like, I get it. I know. But what you need to do is go to more work. And that's what meetups are about. So I want you to go to meetups not, and not think of them as work. Think of them as another way for you to connect with the broader community. While you're at that meetup, you're there first to listen. Don't go to a meetup because you're a software vendor and you're like, I'm going to go to that meetup and pitch my product. That's not why you go to a meetup. You go to a meetup to listen and connect with the community. Eventually, you'll have a story to tell. And by eventually, I mean right now, you have a story to tell at that meetup. But don't make presenting your first goal. Go to connect. There are DevOps meetups all around the world. How many of you work at a company that's hiring? Yeah. Host a meetup. Talk to your employer. If you have a facility, offer to host a local meetup. This is an amazing way to bring people into your office, show them the cool work that you're doing, and get them to consider you the next time they're out there looking for a job. How many of you are actively looking for a job right now? How, and, and now, how many of you are here with your manager? All right. <laughs> OK. OK. That's cool. I just, just two questions completely unrelated. Awesome. Go to conferences. Go to DevOps days. DevOps days, obviously, you're here. So congratulations. You are now community-ing. It's a verb. You didn't know that, right? But it's cool. You're here. You can meet and learn from other folks. <clears throat> but you can't, like, your whole team probably isn't here. Think about bringing this conference experience to your team. How would you do that? 
You might hear some speakers today that are great. Invite them to come to your office. Invite them to come for lunch one day and just hang out, talk about tech, talk about workflow, talk about whatever. Uh, bring those people into your office. Think about some of the new ways that you're going to learn about meeting. If you've never done open spaces, think about, like, understand the process today. Think about taking that back to your work. How could you do open spaces internally? Think about uh, things like lean coffee. Has anyone done lean coffee before? They happen here in Austin a lot, so you can check out a lean coffee and find out what that's all about. It's really good. How many of you think you should be wearing this name badge today? Okay, I'm going to call bullshit. All of you should be wearing this name badge today because I'll tell you what, the, the person that knows the best about your applications and your infrastructure, everyone raise your hand right now. You are the one that knows the best about your applications and your infrastructure in your organization. No one that's standing up in front of you today and making with words with the microphone, they don't understand your infrastructure or your applications. They don't understand the political environment where you work. You are the expert. And guess what? You have a story to tell. So share that story at meetups. Share that story at conferences. Share that story this afternoon during the open spaces. I'll tell you another great hack that works really well. Go on a road trip. There are many of us. Raise your hand if you're local to Austin. Sorry, I, I didn't realize, or you didn't realize, this was going to be the calisthenics talk. We're going to all raise our hands. If you're local to Austin. How many of you have ever been to another company with your group to just talk about how they do DevOps? A couple of you. It's pretty awesome to do that. I did this with my team. I took my team. We, uh, where I worked was, as he said, near DC. We got on a train. We went up to Etsy. I took the whole operations team up to Etsy's offices. We hung out with them for a day. We saw them deploy code. We helped them deploy code. We talked about how they do monitoring. We shared what we do. They shared what they did. That was incredible. We learned so much from each other that day. And if you're a small company who feels like you're doing this wrong, you can still teach others. I, I also encourage you to take this road trip one step further and implement an exchange program. And think about this, and think back to our conversation about how HR has to be involved in DevOps also. What if you took an engineer, operations engineer, whatever, a person from your team, and sent them to work at another company for three or four weeks. Side by side, do the work with that team. And then, a month later, bring someone from that company over to work with your team. Think about how much you guys, you could learn from one another. How much information sharing there could be. How much could you influence the way each other work and the way each other share information. It's really a powerful idea. I know it's also really scary, like, well, if I send Christine over there, is she ever going to want to come back? Well, the answer is, if she, did, if she doesn't want to come back, it's kind of your fault, right? Like, you have to embrace that. If Christine needs to leave, she's going to leave. So uh, just, some, just some, uh, like a quick survey here, that's all we've had time for, on how you can help share, coach, and mentor a community within your organization and outside of your four walls, out in the larger community. So I want to remind you today that you are responsible for your learning. You are responsible for your own development, your career, and your teammates. You're responsible for lots of important things. I want to, I want to focus uh, on this just for one quick second, because I find that most onboarding programs at uh, companies are terrible. Anyone feel like your onboarding program at your company was the best ever? Oh, sorry, <laughs> tricked you, tricked you, yeah. I, I have a question for you. I wonder if, during your onboarding, if someone in the room reminded you the person responsible for onboarding you is you. You're the one that's responsible for making sure that you are as successful as you can possibly be. This does not happen when we onboard new employees. And it has to be a thing that we uh, reiterate with them. Sorry, my slides, they're just, they want me to finish up because I have a minute left. All right, so I'm going to leave you uh, with a couple of things. You are responsible for all of those things, but you are not alone. Go out and find a mentor, or go out and start mentoring someone. <laughs> and mentoring someone doesn't mean that you have to be the expert. Just meet with someone on a regular basis for coffee. Give back to the community. Get involved. Be active in the community. 
for a minute, step out of your echo chamber. When you go work somewhere else or go visit another company, they don't have to be doing anything like what you're doing. You could go to an auto parts manufacturer and see how they organize their work. You might be able to learn something from that. Uh, and I'll quote uh, my good friend Jesse Robbins, don't fight stupid, make more awesome. At Chef, community truly is our foundation. Uh, I have 44 seconds left, so I'm not going to read you these words. I'm going to let these words be read with your own eyes and minds. Uh, but this community is so important to Chef. It's how we were founded. It's what we have built our organization, our company on. I'm really glad to be part of the community here. I'm really glad that you're here with me as part of this DevOps community. Thank you very much. We should call you Nathine. <laughs> Nathine. Thank you sure. so much. And a uh, quick question or two, and then we'll uh, close this one down, take a quick break. That was really good. All right. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Nathan. I'm around all day, so find me if you have questions. And I'm sure you can tweet at him. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right, we'll take a quick break. I'll, I'll keep enforcing this. Don't leave your bag in here because we do close this room down at lunch. And uh, try to keep the chatter down until that other uh, conference finishes up. <laughs>